Hello there, today I'll show you how to make a reload menu. First, let me show you what I have. It's very simple, if I press 1, the reload menu will appear. If I press 1 another time, the reload menu will disappear. If I pick up a weapon, the, right, the weapon will appear right here. If I pick another, it will replace the current weapon. Okay, so with these buttons, I can switch between them. Okay, if I press the left mouse, I will pick that weapon. Okay, I can switch to another. And it's the same behavior for this kind of weapon that I have right here. So as you can see, it's here. Each weapon has different animations. For example, the mullet. So for this, I will put a link in the description where I show you how to make this space weapon. But it's very simple. Just make an actor. So make a right click, go to blueprint class, select an actor, give it a name, and I have this one, for example. So what I need is a skeletal mesh, a 3D model, and a sphere. So just select the default scene root, select a skeletal mesh, as you can see right here, and then select a sphere. Because the idea is having a 3D model, and this component, the idea is interact with this weapon with a beginning of a lab event. So I'm going to use this component for that. So you just make a right click, select event, and you will see the beginning of a lab and an overlap right here. It's right here. So if an actor has entered, I'm going to use the other actor reference to verify if that actor is of the class that the character I'm using. So if it's, I'm going to enable the input. If the overlap ends, I'm going to disable the input using the get play controller, just like that. So this allows me to execute an input action. So what I'm going to do after this is call a custom event inside of my chapter. It's right here. It's a custom event. And for that, you can just make a right click and select custom event. Give it a name and that's all. As you can see here, I have two inputs. Currently, you just need the object reference. And from there, you can just get the class just like that. But what I'm doing is create two parameters, the class and the object of the weapon that I'm using. It's right here. So when I'm called that event, I'm going to use self as the object and from there get the class to fill the class. And now first let me show you something about this weapon. What I'm doing is create a struct. It's right here. You can just make a right click, go to blueprints and select a struct. And struct is an array of different kinds of variables. Here I have all the variables that I need for all the weapons. What I need to set, for example, the damage and the delay. And for the radial menu, I need to have a texture 2D and a string. It's very simple, just select texture 2 d it's an object reference, and a string is right here. So just add that variable on the variable section, struct, and select that struct, it's right here. And also I'm using the schedule mesh to override on the construction script the schedule mesh component. As you can see, it's here. So what I'm doing this is having two variables, because the logic is how this variable right here is an array of the classes that I'm going to use. As you can see here, if you select that icon, you can switch to array. So if you just select this on the default value and you add a value, as you can see, here I have the zero and one value. So I'm just going to set the array element. So instead doing this, I'm just going to use this node and remember to select size to fit. So I'm gonna need a variable to simulate this behavior or having this index. So just select this set array element, use this variable, you can name it as you want, it's just an integer, for example, array fire weapons, and just set it right here. I'm going to use as the item, the class reference. And what I'm doing here is just verify that my current index is less than six, less or equal than six, for example. So if it's true, I'm just going to set that array element, and then I'm using this variable to switch between all the weapons. What the buttons are doing is change the value of this variable. So to override the current weapon, I'm just setting that variable with the index fire, index fire weapons. And then just increment that. You can just select this, select plus plus, and it's right here. And now with the class, what I'm doing is get the class defaults. So I'm just getting the struct variable. So here I'm going to use the struct image and name to give it to this interface. But first, let me show you the idea about the weapon menu. I will put a link in the description where I give you these four files that I'm using. Uh, remember to use the file browser. Don't, don't try to import or drag and drop the files that not going to work. And it's right here. I have a lot of components that's why I'm giving you for free. The most important part is the size box. You need to put this where you want to spawn the radial menu and then change the anchor to this one. This is very important to calculate the mouse position. 
And then I just have some horizontal and vertical box. I have these uh, images right here. I will give you on the same link. And here on this overlay, I'm using another widget. As you can see, it's right here. It's on the same link. Here, what I need is just this image and a name. You can always put those two components right here on the weapon menu, but this is just to have things uh, organized. So here I have this interface. An interface allows you to create the same kind of custom event on all the classes that you need. I just make a right click, select blueprints, go to blueprint interface, and it's this one right here. It's a similar process to create an custom event. As you can see here, you just need to add a function. And I have this called set fire weapon info. It's very simple. For input, just select a texture and a name. It's right here. So now what I'm doing is on my chapter is get that widget right here across my weapon menu to fill that. So what I'm doing here is select that as a target. So now on the graph, I'm just calling this event right here. Remember to set these two components as a variable. Just check this checkbox right here. And for the weapon image, I just need to set the brush from texture using that texture and the name is the same. So now it's very simple. If you pick up a weapon, uh, you're going to add that to an array. And from there, you're going to set that on the weapon menu. It's right here. So now let me show you how to spawn the weapon menu. It's very simple. On the begin play, I'm going to create that widget. Remember that the widget, you, well, creating, is just make an object reference. So you don't want to destroy and create again the weapon menu if you want to set the visibility. So on the begin play, what I'm doing is just create a widget, select the class that you want. In my case, it's weapon menu right here. Then make a right click right here on the return value and just promote your variable. So now if you do this, you are going to create a variable to control the weapon menu. And then just add to viewport. And what I'm doing right here is get a character reference. So it's right here on the variables. Just create a reference to the current character that you are using right here. And just drag this and select character. And on my character, so if I do this, I can use a self reference to fill this value. Now let me explain the weapon menu. Here I have this function right here. It's part of the same interface. It's the set visibility. This is one, I just need to make a boolean right here, a value. So for that, you just need to go to the class settings. And here, select that interface. As you can see, it's here, set info. So now you can call that event. It's set visibility W in my case. So what I'm doing is set the visibility of the whole widget. If it's the value is false, I'm going to set as hidden. If it's true, I'm going to set that as visible. It's the same logic for each slot that I have. Just to go to the class settings and add that right here, the set info. And then I'm going to need two custom events. Remember, just make a right click and select custom event, star selection and end selection, because the idea is called a function. I will explain that first. I have just three functions, current slot, current selection, and get current. The get current is the function that is calculating the mouse position. And for that, just get an angle. If that angle is between, for example, this is position, the zero slot is going to be true. It's simple. The one that is three is zero, one, two, and three. And then I'm using this function, call it current slot. It's right here. It's very simple. I'm just setting all the variables that I have. For that, you just need to create four variables. Remember to set that as the default value as false. And then I have this function, call it call selection. This is the function that I'm using on all my characters. For example, for the fire action, when I make a left click, for example, right here, I'm using the weapon menu reference and then I'm calling the selection. So this function is just to get the current slot that I'm selecting. It's very simple, it's right here. So for example, if the zero is true, just select everything as false, except that the zero, select it as true. And the same for the one, two, three, and either if it's the three is false. So now let me talk about that action. So now to set the visibility of the weapon menu, I'm using this action right here and a flip flop. So if I press this one time, it means that I'm going to spawn the widget. If I press it two times, I'm going to set the visibility as hidden. And this is going to repeat again and again. So I'm just creating this variable right here is on menu. 
is just a boolean and if it's true well if it's a i'm going to set that as true if it's b i'm going to select that set that as false and then just get a weapon menu and set the visibility like we did on the begin play is right here obviously if you want to spawn that you're gonna need to set the visibility first as false is right here and then i have my custom events star selection and a selection my two custom events are here then just get the play controller to set the show mask cursor and here is false and here will be true then ignore log input true and false and then just set the input mode as you can see i have two of them game and ui game only and ui only so for this you select game and ui and the widget to focus set that as the weapon menu and here just select game only so remember i'm calling here the start selection and here the end selection because the idea is called the get current function it's right here the one that is calculating the angle so if the selection happens i'm going to create the sequence to execute two things first i'm going to create a gate it's right here just create a gate this value doesn't matter because what i'm doing first and if i have this selection start i'm going to open the gate and then i'm going to enter i'm going to create a small delay calculate the game current and start again but if the selection ends i'm going to close the gate that's the main reason why i'm first open the gate and then enter so now about the fire input uh, for in my case it's just a left mouse input left mouse button right here if i'm on the menu i'm going to call the selection and for example if the zero lot the lot that i have right here is true i'm going to spawn the actor using the struct that i have right here but if false then i'm going to verify if the current slot that i'm selecting is this one the one slot and you can repeat the same process for all the um, uh, variables that you have right here so it's very simple using the index fire weapon chain the one that i'm using to change between weapons i'm getting the index inside of this array right here so if it's valid i'm going to just spawn actor from class uh, this is just for multiplayer as you can see here i have this event is still one right here this will run on server and this will run on multicast uh yeah here what i'm doing is after spawning that just set that as a variable the current word so if it's valid it means that i already have a weapon so if it's valid i'm going to destroy that actor this is uh the same is for multiplayer but in the end what i'm doing is just destroy the actor and the same for the another kind of weapon and here what i'm doing is just spawn an actor so if you take a look at this getting this reference what i'm doing just is spawn an actor from class and i'm using this get to fill the class okay you can just uh, get for example here get actor transform this one just to fill this value and then just attach that to a component for example the schedule mesh and i'm using a specific socket inside on my schedule mesh okay and a feature of the personal locomotion system is this thing called overlay state as you can see here i have different poses for the rifle the pistol gun hand one and two hands remember to set that and this variable is just an enumerator fire weapon melee i have that right here on the fire weapon if i'm not on the menu based on the current weapon that i have i'm going to shoot or attack now about these two buttons what i'm doing is just create this on press event and thanks to the character reference that i have i'm going to call this custom events so for example here i'm moving to the left and to the right left and right so uh, i'm going to decrease and increase the value so here i have that based on the call selection based on this lot that i'm selecting i'm going to adjust that variable and i'm going to override the current weapon that i have on my weapon menu so just get the weapon struct and from there um, i'm moving to the left so i'm going to reduce this value so you reduce minus one the index that i'm using to switch between weapons and if that's valid it means that i have something on the left if that's true i'm going to set that variable to just decrease that you can just select this the command int minus minus is right here and from there i'm going to set the fire weapon info 
the current weapon that I have based on the class defaults, just getting the weapon struct using this index, get class defaults, and set the image and the name is right here. But if it's false, it means that I don't have something on the left. So I'm going to switch to the last array element that I have. For that, you just need to get the length, select minus one, uh, because the length get the number of elements, but an array starts on zero. Just select minus one, set that variable, and the same process. You can just copy and paste, but change this uh, index right here. And it's the same process. If the zero is false, it means that, and if the one is true, it means that I'm selecting this a lot right here, and just repeat that process. Uh, but now the opposite thing, you can uh, currently just copy and paste because the only thing that I need to change is this value. Instead of minus, I'm going to select plus one. And the same thing if it's valid and just change this under the variable, variable right here, plus plus. As you can see, increment int. And now if it's false, if I pressing the right button and it's false, it means that I have something direct. So I'm going to switch to the first element of my array, the zero. And the same process, just set that, as you can see, is here. Get the class defaults using this index and set the slot that you want. For example, in this case, I'm using this work weapon slot, but here I'm using the fire weapon. Uh, remember, uh, first you need to create the base weapon actor, then you need to create the weapon menu. Uh, well, first you need to spawn that and set the visibility to false. And then if you, you need to create this behavior, when you press a button, it will appear and disappear. It's very simple. If you pick up a weapon, call a custom event inside on your character to overgrind the current slot that you have. Based on that, you're going to switch the index uh, weapon chain to spawn the weapon that you are selecting. Okay. So it's very simple, the same behavior for this kind of weapon and current is all. If you have some question, I will put the link to my Discord where you can ask me anything about Unreal.